A Day at the Races is a Marx Brothers film from 1937 and it was a massive hit. But if you're anything like me, you're radically disinterested in the majority of the film and only care about the dancing. So let's get into it. In the fall of 1936, Whitey had three separate Lindy Hop teams working at the same time. We have the aforementioned Whitey's Hopping Maniacs at the Cotton Club. We have another team led by Tiny Bunch performing at the Harlem Club Floor. And finally, the team we're interested in who were on tour with Ethel Waters featuring Nora Miller and Leon James, Ella Gibson and George Greenidge, and Willa Mae Ricker and Snooky Beasley. While on tour of the Paramount Theatre in LA, they were scouted by the production team behind the new Marx Brothers film, and Whitey himself convinced the producers to bring on a fourth couple, Tiny Bunch, and himself as an extra. You can actually spot Whitey himself in the clip. He is dead center in the jam circle at the back, wearing a black shirt, suspenders, and easily clocked by his signature white streak. For me, the scene really kicks off when Evie Anderson starts to sing, who in 1931 became the first full-time vocalist for the Duke Ellington Orchestra. Her appearance in this film actually marks one of the few times she didn't perform with the Duke. And then we have the dancers. In order, we have John Tiny Bunch, Dorothy Miller and Johnny Smalls, Nora Miller and Leon James, Willa Mae Ricker and Snooky Beasley, the iconic lockstep here was Beasley's signature move, and Ella Gibson and George Greenidge. The clips we have here on YouTube aren't actually the full sequence. The full sequence is almost eight minutes long, which was unusual for a Hollywood film of its time. Moreover, it contained important plot development, which meant it couldn't be cut from the final film very easily. The song featured in the section, All God's Children Got Rhythm, was actually the movie's theme, playing both at the opening and also at the movie's finale, which also featured black performers. This was incredibly unusual for the time and was a significant advancement for African-American representation in Hollywood and caused one reviewer at the time, Thomas Cripps, to call it a day at the Negro races in the Amsterdam News. Side note, this is one of the oldest African-American newspapers in the US. Didn't know that. So for all of its wonderfulness, there are some very infuriating details that we're gonna get into. For example, each couple get a different amount of eights, and whoever was cutting the music has clearly disregarded the AABA structure. This shows me that the person behind the editing didn't care about the connection between the music and the dance, not to mention the completely gratuitous and unnecessary sound effects accompanying the aerials, as if they were not amazing enough already. You had to add a tin whistle? Seriously? However, this is the first time we see the Whitey Lindy Hoppers on screen, and for me, it's a really special routine because I learned a bunch of it with my old True of the Skyliner, so it has a special place in my heart. Um, I would love to get more perspectives on this clip. Let me know in comments how do you feel about it. Tomorrow, we're going to go into the history of the minstrel show, how it relates to this particular clip, and why we should care about it today. Thanks again to my patrons for supporting me. If you are interested in joining my family of dancing baked goods, please check out the link below. So I will see you tomorrow with more in-depth history about African-American representation in pop culture. Um, and this is something I'm really excited about. It's, I've done so much research and so much work on this video, so I'm so excited for you guys to see it.